Well, welcome back, friends and neighbors. I'm John, your whiskey neighbor, and today I'd like to share a few thoughts on uh, Jack Daniel's Single Barrel Select. Well, thanks for joining me today. It's weather's well, turned a bit cool, so I'm back inside at the kitchen table. Um, and I'm going to take a look, as I said, about Jack Daniels Single Barrel Select. Uh, just right at the top, I want you to know I don't drink a lot of Jack Daniels. Um, of course, I've had it. I can't imagine a whiskey person who hasn't had good old number seven, but, uh, but really, I, I haven't had a bottle of it in quite some time. So, you know, my tasting notes, my thoughts on this are really about this barrel. Uh, with only vague memories or thoughts of, is that what Jack Daniels tastes like? That kind of thing. So uh, if you don't know, uh, Jack Daniels, uh, I think, might produce the most whiskey in the world. It's got to be very close. Uh, they sell an awful lot. Um, and it's Tennessee whiskey. Uh, I think it meets all the criteria of being a bourbon, um, but it's made in Tennessee and they're awfully proud of that. And so they clearly say on their products, Tennessee whiskey. Um, this particular uh, single barrel select, it's it's not the, um, do they call it barrel proof or full proof? I can't remember, but uh, this one is just um, uh, uh, brought down to 47% alcohol. This particular one says, um, I don't know what Rick number is. I should look that up, L-25, and then there's a barrel number here. Uh, I think that's I2-6153. So, um, as I understand it, this is you know a barrel pick, uh, so they're tasting a variety of barrels, and they obviously are going to release ones that they think, oh, this this really represents good stuff uh, from our distillery. Um, uh, so, oh, um, sorry, it is an American whiskey, uh, predominantly corn. Now, I should look up the mash bill again, uh, but if I recall, it's. Uh, you know, high corn for sure, probably around 80%, but I'll put it in the notes. I always add it when I'm editing the video. Um, and then enough rye to keep it interesting, probably about 8%, uh, and more barley than many. I think it's somewhere around 12. I'll, I'll put the numbers in here. But, uh, you know, a fair amount of barley, lots of corn, and a little bit of rye, around 8%. Uh, that's their mash bill. Then they distill it. But what's unique to Jack Daniels and a few other companies in Tennessee is the Lincoln County Press, and that's where you know they uh, they make their own charcoal from uh, from maple. Uh, yeah, I think it's maple trees, uh, and so then they get that charcoal, and then they slowly drip um, their uh, distilled products. So it's before aging. I don't know what strength is when it goes through there, um, but it's probably higher. I'm like I'm sure. Um, and they really, like, like I think three to five days, it kind of runs through this charcoal. And then, uh, you know, they age it in um, charred American oak, new oak. Um, and then they age it for some time. I don't know the age of, of this statement. I, I did a quick, you know, how you get on, and you're like, oh, i got to talk about this. And you do just a quick, wait a second, what is the age on this? And I never really found out. I, I found some sites that put it between um, four and seven. And I got in trouble uh, with my last American whiskey, I think, um, by doing that same kind of quick process and then trusting a site that told me something that was clearly wrong. So I, I hopefully I apologize enough for that. But so this is Jack Daniels. I understand it's that regular mash bill. Uh, of course, they've selected a, a particular barrel they think uh, is an excellent expression. They bottled it at 47% ABV, um, or that, I guess that'd be 94 proof. Uh, so let's see what it tastes like. Get at the whiskey. Well, you know on the nose, I'm getting, huh, you know, just a, it's it's a fairly nice nose. Um, there's there's some some high sugars. I can even get at a little bit of wood maybe. Is there a little fruit in there? Yeah. Yeah, maybe a mellowing fruit. Um, 
you can't taste Jack Daniels, talk about Jack Daniels, share it with anyone and not talk about banana. I suppose I could say banana, but for me on the nose before I've had some sips, and I find the nose changes a bit as I drink it, but up front it's not powerful like that way. Maybe maybe if I'm getting banana, it's more unripe bananas. So it's, it's really more tree fruits for me. And brown sugar. Um, there's maybe a hint of of alcohol, like like an ethanol or something, but not not bad. I, I, I like it. Good nose, which is nice. I think I've been kind of striking out with my American whiskey lately, so I like the nose. I don't find the palate terribly complicated. Um, uh, I I like the sweetness up front. Again, you know that brown sugar, maybe honey, um, vanilla, and the fruit here. I could be convinced it's a bit more banana. So I wonder what that is, like a juicy fruit or a, like a sweeter fruit that makes you think maybe maybe of that banana banana bread, because it's actually pretty. Nice in the mouth, a little bit creamy. There might even be a little bit of nutty quality in there. And the nose is a little better here after you've had a bit of the whiskey. I don't know why. And now I, I, I've been enjoying the nose and sharing that with you. I will say it's not like some, some bourbons to me that just welcome me with deep fruits or really get at the burnt and toasted caramels. That's not it, but it's, it's an enjoyable nose. And um, yeah, and it's enjoyable flavor. A little bit fruity, a little bit banana maybe, um, but you know, a little bit fruity, definitely sweet, but not deep caramels again, not burnt, burnt sugars, um, but sugar, brown sugar, kind of corn sweetness. Um, it picks up a little bit on the mouth, which is nice, a little bit of pepper, um, kind of mid palate, you'll start to get that. Um, so it must be a bit of the rye coming through. Um, but quite enjoyable. The finish to me uh, gets, is good in the short term. Like, like you've swallowed, I'm talking for a bit and I'm thinking, oh, that was nice. You know, I could have a little bit more. It's just doing that nice balance between oak notes, but still reminding me of the sweetness. Little drying, not, not as drying as some, but not so oily or chewy. Um, but it can, like right now, the longer edge of the finish, it's nice that it still has something going on, is a little bit bitter for me. So it's not the best finish uh, that, I, that I've had in whiskey. Um, you know, I, I enjoy this. I, I, as I said, I, I'm not a Jack Daniels fan. And I think if you are, uh, this would be a must buy or, or the barrel proof, you know, to get the higher proof. Um, but I'm, I didn't bring, put down some water with me today and I only have a couple of minutes as I'm uh, trying to uh, clean up for some company. Um, so I won't go get it. But I, when I was adding water, as I was trying to taste through, you know, how does that change? Um, I don't know, for me, it actually uh, opened up the, the caramel side of it. So then I did get a little more uh, caramel or toffee and just a little more cinnamon. And, and, and I actually liked the way adding water took this, which surprised me because I generally put water in to see what other layers are there that I'm not getting. But I tend not to, to put a lot of water in whiskey and at 47% it's strong, but it's not too burning. Anyways, I did actually like adding water to this one and I, I would say definitely try it with a little bit of water. It took it in, in a, a little more rounded, balanced sugars than what I'm getting here. And it could be the alcohol is causing my tongue to kind of react a little bit. So I'm not really uh, benefiting from the flavors that are in here. Um, you know, uh, the problem I would have with uh, Jack Daniel's single barrel is, uh, well, I like the presentation, love the color, um, and and the taste is nice. Uh, problem for me is a little bit where the price is at, but but given that it's a selected barrel and and uh, it's a little nicer bottle, 
I, you know, I understand why they're, they're pricing it where they are, uh, but in my area, I'm up here in Canada, um, you know, this is $50, $55 product, and, uh, and there's just a lot of really good uh, whiskey and bourbon around that $55 mark that, that competes quite well. That said, today I'm liking it, yesterday I liked it, uh, last week uh, I liked it, so uh, it's something that I would recommend that you give it a try. I know. Um, if you've tried Jack Daniels and you hate it, I mean, that's like, that's like trying red label uh, um, Johnny Walker and saying, I hate Johnny Walker. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of other expressions uh, that these distillers put out. And here, they've, they've taken the time to pick a barrel that they think, hey, we like those tasting notes. And if you haven't had Jack, um, I would suggest this is maybe a nice way to see if you can find it on sale or something um, to get at some of the classic... Jack Daniels flavors, um, but put together in, in a fairly well-rounded product. Uh, to give it a star value out of five, um, three, and, three and a half, three and a half, could be more. Now it's interesting that the, the, the long finish, because <laughs> remember I liked it, I didn't like it, got bitter. Now I'm just left with a nice candy sweetness in my mouth. Um, pleasant. So you know, it's probably a little bit more than three and a half stars. I just hesitate to give it more on my ratings because I, I, I keep that four star for some pretty good whiskey. And, uh, you know, maybe it is. Um, maybe it is. Anyways, guys, I've taken my time. Uh, it's all I have. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts uh, as I'm going through some American whiskey. So thanks for joining me. Um, tell me your thoughts about Jack Daniels. As always, tell me where I got it wrong because I often do. Um, but thanks for joining me today for a little sip of uh, of some barrel select from uh, I pretty I don't know if they sell the most whiskey in the world or very close to it. Anyways, you guys take care. Have a great evening. Cheers.